So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Taylor here, and I'm coming back with some more information about the incident that happened at St. Mary's uh, Catholic School in Goldsboro, Net, uh, North Carolina. Now, for the past two days, I've did two videos. The first video was alerting the public to the situation where a 10-year-old black child has underwent bullying and racial slurs uh, for about a three-month period, so much so that the mother had to remove him from the school. Now, uh, the second video that I did uh, was focusing on a police report that was filed by Lieutenant uh, Wayne County Sheriff Officer Christopher Peden. And this police report alleges that this 10-year-old black child uh, who, in, who had endured uh, racial bullying for three months assaulted his child. And this report was filed on February the 29th. And the, the alleged event happened in January, uh, almost two months, uh, two months before the report was filed, which speaks of retaliation. But what's most disturbing about this is what they put in the narrative. Now read this. He said, reporting person alleges that the known juvenile offender assaulted the listed victim. And if you see right there, it says suspect hate bias motivate. What they're basically doing is trying to charge this 10 year old child with a hate crime after he have he has been deliberately targeted um, for months. And today I'm going to go over some emails that detail how uh, the school and the principal Kil Kilgore never address the situation. Now, the video yesterday garnered some comments, as many of them do. And we have people in the comments who substantiated the treatment that they child received at that school or even they themselves. However, we've also had some people who uh, was disturbed by the video. Um, and actually, once again, they want to kind of blame the victim. One person says, do you know about all the racist things this mother's child has said towards others? Where is that in your report? Right. And other people said uh, there are two sides to every story. This 10-year-old has been throwing racial slurs as well, calling Hispanics border jumpers. Um, and then they said, um, how are you going to post two videos and still not address what the victim has done to the other students in that class? Uh, you have been biased on the whole situation. And... Another person said, uh, students have heard him spit racial slurs and call other kids mean words. Now, if that is true, then why was not any of that addressed in these several emails between the mother and the principal and the teachers while she's addressing the concerns that she had from her child coming home telling her what the uh, students said to him. Wouldn't you think that if she said, hey, my child said this, wouldn't the principal say, well, you know, the other student said, your child said this, that, and the other. None of that is in this email. So that kind of puts that argument to rest as making him out to be the aggressor. Nevertheless, regardless, say if those things did happen, say if they called him a name and he called him them a name, nobody wants to address the fact that this officer went down there and took out a simple assault charge, suspecting hate and motivated bias on a 10-year-old child trying to criminalize him. Nobody wants to touch on that, though. No comment no comment from that last video touched on that. And so that is that is most despicable in my opinion. I've been in several kindergarten, first grade, third grade, fourth, fourth grade fights 
Kids scuffle. Kids pick on each other. No one at 10 years old should be dragged through the criminal judicial system because of an incident. And an incident, once again, when he was pushed first. And I'm going to get to that in this email. But nowhere in these emails does it say that the child uh, who was receiving all of these racial slurs was accused of doing the same. So where are you people who are getting that information from in the comments? Where are you getting your information from? Feel free to share. My number is 919-587-7782. As for the proof, now this is an email. I'm going to show you the email, right? This is an email from uh, Daniel Kilgore. Uh, the the principal. Now, this email was sent on Tuesday, December the 12th, I guess when the mother first started reporting uh, these incidents. Now, he says, good afternoon. Thanks again for having an honest conversation with us this morning. As I talked about this morning, I have addressed concerns with several students and families throughout the day today. While I can't comment on other students' discipline, I want you to have the assurance that we are dealing with the problem. Please help us keep informed if there's any more information or context you can provide for us. We will be watching closely to make sure this behavior is not repeated. As always, please feel free to email or call me if you need. That is from the principal. Now, you tell me if this child was also spewing these things and uh, perpetrating that similar behavior, you don't think the principal would have mentioned that in this email because we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna address the incident that he did mention, right? And so the parent's response two days later was, thank you for meeting with us on such short notice as the issues at hand the bullying, antagonizing, racial slurs are intolerable and does not provide a conducive environment for learning. I pray that all went well with the meetings with the children slash families involved and the disrespect is discontinued. Thanks again for following up with me. Now that is from the mother to the principal uh, two days later from that response. That is Thursday, December the 14th. Now, these emails right here are two months later, evidently, um, the disrespect was never handled. Now, the mother writes uh, to the principal, as I inquired about my child's day yesterday, he shared at recess on the basketball court, students told him that I didn't tell you to stop working and proceeded to do hand motions as though they were whipping him with the sound effects of whipping and stated, get back to work. Afterwards, they proceeded to play basketball and one child continued with the racial slur during the game. It was also said that the child continued this behavior throughout the course of the day my child expressed he did not inform staff due to feeling uncomfortable at the time. Please handle this situation as we know this is not the first encounter with racial slurs and my child should not be subjected to such cruelty and disrespect. Now, this email was sent to the principal two months after the first email. Now, this principal responds... The same day, 9 in the morning, this is Daniel Kilgore. Good morning. Thank you for letting me know about this. That is disturbing. I will be addressing this issue today with those boys. I may ask your child for some added context as well so I can hear what is happening from him. Once again, this is two months later. Never once did this principal say, hey, well... He did this. He said this. 
He's being mean to other kids. If those things were happening uh, as the people in the comments allege, then the principal probably would relay those things to the mother, right? Correct? So, two days later, uh, the mother asked this teacher, he says, good evening. Mrs. Morrison, I would like to ask, why was my child questioned about choosing to be around the same boys who directed racial slurs toward him? Is this in any way assisting to resolve the problem? I would be more than happy to answer the question at hand. My child is not raised to reciprocate negative behaviors towards wrongdoers. Instead, he is taught to be the change he would like to see. Is this not what the teaching of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Would you rather he hold a grudge and disengage with his classmates? Previously, there were a set of children who he temporarily separated himself from due to racial comments. Now, there's, now there's additional children. As I stated before, they are children and what they exhibit are learned behaviors from what they have either heard or seen. Regardless, if he chooses to engage or disengage with them, he should still report such behaviors and it should be investigated and penalized appropriately to prevent further occurrence. Is this being done? When will this behavior no longer be tolerated? All right. Now, once again, this mother is asking why are you asking him why is he hanging around these children? Why are not you dis disciplining or dissipating the behavior from these children? All right? That is the question one must ask. Once again, there is no relation from this teacher that's saying that her child did anything uh, to other students. So we're going to keep going through these emails. Now, uh, the teacher um, replied to the mother. She said, good morning. Miss Gurley, our, high sc our school counselor, had done a presentation with the fifth grade class about friendship boundaries that morning. Now, friendship boundaries. What is that going to do to address this, these individual students? No, don't do a group session. Talk to each individual student and reprimand those students about their behavior. Once again, very, very soft in their handling of this matter. She said, I asked your child why he was sitting with the same boys at lunch because I am concerned for him and want to understand how he's feeling. If you want to, if you are concerned and want to understand how he's feeling, you know why he's feeling. Won't you get these children to stop or suspend them or expel them or reprimand them so to make sure that this behavior doesn't continue? Once again, this is all uh, politically correct words here by this teacher. I frequently check in with my students individually to see how they are doing, but especially when I know that something like this has occurred. This teacher is actually admitting, I know what's going on, but I haven't done nothing to stop it. Now, once again, if he was doing something, this teacher would obviously, she would be obligated to say, well, no, that's not what happened. Your child did this, said this, did this, such and such. But that's not in this email. So I want all of you people in the comments that were um, saying, okay, well, uh, he's bad too. Where? None of these emails say that. She says, I absolutely agree that such behavior should be reported. Mr. Kilgore would be able, better able to address what he is doing regarding the incident. Now we go back to, you know, everybody's passing the buck. Now it's Mr. Kilgore's fault, right? So now, that same day, here goes Mr. Kilgore. Said, I have been trying to reach you by phone this afternoon. However, I am in Raleigh today and have to use my cell rather than the school number. Is there a way we can connect sometimes today? 
I was in the middle of responding to your previous email when I got a call from the school about a, another concerning incident with your child. I will be taking strong, immediate action on this. However, I want to talk with you today if possible about the situation. My cell is blah, 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 blah. I will be in a principal's meeting for the next two hours or so, but I will step away if I get a call from you. I'm sorry I have to contact you about this. This situation is unacceptable, and I want to address it with our other students immediately. Now, once again, I thought you did that two months ago, right? Here he is once again saying he's going to address the situation, and he's going to do it strongly. However, as we see, nothing uh, was ever done. I want to continue uh, with this email. I've got a couple more to go. Just bear with me if you can. Now, this is from the diocese on March 7th. Dear ma'am, thank you for taking the time to talk with me this afternoon. As I shared, we, when we spoke, we are working with Mr. Kilgore. Now, this is two weeks after that last incident. We are working with Mr. Kilgore to address the concerns that you have shared. Please encourage your child to share any additional concerns with an adult as soon as, excuse me, as soon as it happens. As he shares with you, please also reach out to Mr. Kilgore to be sure that he's aware of them. You have my contact information, so feel free to reach out to me directly with any with any additional concerns that you have as well. Please be assured of my prayers for you and your son. We don't, she doesn't need prayer. She needs y'all to stop the children from using racial slurs and bullying them, right? So that was on March the 7th. Now the mother responds to this lady who is the archdiocese. Per our conversation via the phone on Friday, February 23rd, which is the date that the principal asked her to speak with him. You mentioned you were going to be delivering hard reprimands, which consist of suspensions to the students who inflicted racial slurs upon my child and sent out letters to all families to bring about awareness of the negative culture that exists within the school and to help alleviate the issue. When do you plan to take action? The lack of urgency to alleviate this subject matter is concerning. Furthermore, I learned today that my child allegedly slapped and threatened a student last week. The incident was said to be reported to law enforcement. Am I understanding this accurately? Now, once again, this happened in January, but law enforcement came a week after this email and also she just learned that about it a month and a half later. If so, my question to you is why was I not notified? I understand you may not be able to inform me of the student's name, but you can inform me of the law enforcement officer's name. What is the name and contact information of the law enforcement officer involved? Now we all know this law enforcement officer is the parent of the child Lieutenant Christopher Peden, who went out and took out a, almost a hate crime on a 10-year-old child. This leads me to think of last week. You called to mention some reprimands were given and you were informed my child grabbed a student and stated the student gets on his nerves, is annoying, and sucks. You also stated you will call me back if it is serious, and if not, you will not call me back. Nevertheless, I did not receive a call back. When I asked my child about such incident, he was puzzled and did not know what I was speaking of. The following day, my child was questioned about the incident while at school to find the incident uh, unsubstantiated. What is the policy regarding retaliation? 
And that's what we're getting at now. That's why you may hear those people saying, well, he did this. This is retaliation. This, this is, and, 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 and matter of fact, you're going to see it right here in this next incident. So as the mother and the child continue to complain and not get any uh, recourse, now the child becomes the bad guy. He's threatening students. He's grabbing students by the neck. But none of these claims were substantiated. So all of you people in the comments, make sure uh, that you hear this from the principal as he responds to that email. He says, good afternoon. Thank you for sharing your concerns. We have been working hard behind the scenes to address all of the concerns that you brought to us. Once again, he never states any concerns in the reverse or in the inverse or reciprocated towards her child doing anything to another child. So once again, if all of this complaints and, 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 and wanting justice, not once did the principal say, well, you know, you know, your child said this, you know, your child said that. Wouldn't you think that those things will be in here? No, they're not. So, Let's continue. He said, last week it was reported that your child had threatened another student. After speaking with several students and staff, the accusation was not substantiated. So now what we see is these children accusing him of something to cover their rear ends, for lack of a better word. He says, I learned that there was an issue that took place in religion and art class. What I learned was that another student removed something, a sticker or part of a book from your child's desk. The classroom teacher noticed the student doing it and had the student return the item to your child. The teacher did not observe your child react. Once again, this principal is admitting the bullying, antagonizing, and target of this child continues. He said, I've also been looking into the matter where your child allegedly stabbed another student. This was said to have occurred in January, so this is not related to the issue that happened in art class. SMS St. Mary School has not made any reports to law enforcement about this. However, I believe that the parent family has. This guy right here, Christopher Peter, show you his name right here. Christopher Peter, a law enforcement officer. He, he's going to take out a hate crime charge against this 10-year-old who allegedly slapped this child after the child pushed him, right? An officer from Goldsboro PD came to campus to speak with me about the issue Investigative rivers can be reached at blah, 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 blah. We are diligently working to address the concerns that you have shared. So you've been diligently working for three months and this is what it's come to. And here is another email uh, from uh, Mr. Kilgore. I just tried giving you a call. However, I was unable to reach you. I wanted to leave a voicemail. However, the phone said it was not accepting voicemail messages. Is there a time we can talk? There was an incident in PE class today between your child and another student, and there was shoving involved. I want the opportunity to talk with you and your child to get his version of events. If there's a time where we could connect later on today, it will be very helpful to speak with you and your child so we can get clarity on what happened. Now, uh, the mother, this is on uh, Sunday, um, March 10th. Uh, she said, I will be in contact with you to inform you of my availability this week to me. Respectfully, I'm requesting that you not speak to my child without my presence. In the meantime, you can notify me of St. Mary's retaliation policy. Once again, the mother is, is once again realizing, okay, well, all of these things are 
occurring now. They're blaming my child. She feels, and it's obvious that this is a form of retaliation. Now, um, this principal responds that Tuesday, based on our discussion this morning, we did not speak with your child today. However, we would like to speak with you, him, tomorrow afternoon. Now, uh, she re 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 responded, as I mentioned to you previously, I will inform you of my avail availability. I have to work and do not have coverage in my absence. I prefer to be present due to the lack of trust and want to ensure my child feels safe and comfortable as he has been under enough scrutiny. For law enforcement to be on school campus to obtain information of an incident involving my child and I not be notified is absurd. You made a conscious decision to inform Marcia Navarro, who is the Diocese of Law Enforcement, of an incident regarding my child and not inform the parent. Your actions are very concerning. It would have been professional and ethical of you to be this determined to resolve the racial slurs, prejudice incidents I've reported and have been proven to be true since last semester, as you are with this new incident. What she's saying is, okay, well, you want to investigate this possible shoving match, but why, where is all this diligence? Where is all this uh, virality in investigating uh, the previous three months of racial slurs and prejudice? She said, uh, instead, you have demonstrated that my concerns and my son's education is not important. As my son's environment there is not conducive for learning. After multiple conversations with you regarding the mistreatment and prejudice inflicted upon my son by his peers, you have allowed continuous emotional and mental abuse to be inflicted upon him due to your lack of problem-solving skill set. As you mentioned, you do not know what to do. However, you shared some ideas but did not follow through with them. Suspensions, letters to the families regarding racial culture present. This is why I prefer to be present when my son is being questioned. So what are we looking to accomplish with this forthcoming meeting? I've also inquired about the retaliation policy for St. Mary's School and have not received a response. Do I have a right to be provided with such information? Now, um, and that was on March the 8th and the last email provided is when she withdrew her child from the school. Now, as we see that this principal, this teacher, the archdiocese, whatever her title is, all of them knew about this continued bullying. Actually, he admitted it. I know what's going on. The teacher said, I know what's going on. And actually, I'm going to, tomorrow I'm going to play the meeting. Where at the beginning of the meeting, once again, he says, well, we've got a mess here. We've got a mess. Basically admitting that, you know, this child has been targeted. Now, nowhere in these emails, once again, and nowhere in that conversation that I've listened to, was there any allegation, any mention of this child doing something to other students. The only one incident that they said was found to be unsubstantiated. So this is what is going on, you know, behind closed doors. And, you know, as as my brother uh, Malcolm X said, he said, if you're not careful, the media will have you thinking that the criminal is the victim and the victim is the criminal. Now, as we see, from this police report, uh, they have this 10-year-old child who has endured, documented, proven racial uh, mistreatment now being charged, possibly charged, with a suspected hate and bias-motivated crime. Y'all answer that question, though. Before you start trying to say, oh, the emails are one-sided and, you know, all... What instance should a 10-year-old child be 
charged with a hate crime following a elementary school scuffle. Don't be silent on that. Call me direct, 919-587-7782. Because you, you're, you're quick to say, well, he, he's the, he was calling names too. Mm, not according to the principal, not according to the teacher, not according to the Archdiocese Navarro. Well, you know, he was being mean. What, where? But address that discriminalization, though. Y'all remaining silent on that part, though. Get with me. Leave your, leave your comments. Address that first, first thing out of your mouth. Address why is this officer trying to criminalize this 10-year-old child? who has documented being, being bullied in this school. Give me an answer for that. Then we can, you know, we can, we, we can have some more conversations. But until you give me an answer for that, then, I, you know, I got nothing. I got no conversation for you. Because that is outright despicable. All the things that y'all said about me, well, you should be ashamed of talking about you. Whatever. This guy should be ashamed of trying to get a get a 10-year-old black boy involved in the judicial system, in which we all know that there are two separate judicial systems. One for white people and one for everybody else. So um that is that that is the gist of this video. Once again, I just wanted to go through these emails to address those comments saying, well, he was the bad child too. Where? And we, we, we're going to listen to that 52-minute uh, uh, meeting. Maybe not the whole meeting, but we're going to listen to that meeting between the parent and uh, the school official uh, tomorrow. So y'all tune in, 919-587-7782. Peace and blessings.